Okay, so ready to ditch the everyday grind for a bit? Let's trade it in for something a little more, you know, exotic. How about those picture-perfect beaches of Southeast Asia? I'm talking turquoise waters, lush jungles. Sounds pretty tempting right about now. Right. So that's exactly where we're headed in today's deep dive. Yeah. But we're not just skimming the surface this time. We're going deeper. Deeper? How so? We're diving into an excerpt from Explore Southeast Asia, a world traveler's handbook. And let me tell you, this isn't your typical travel guide. Oh, what makes it so different? It's less about, like, which temples you have to see and more about how to really experience the region authentically. Like, less tourist, more traveler, you know? I like the sound of that. So what kind of insider secrets does this handbook reveal? Well, I will say, it's not trying to be a complete trip planner. But it's got these little nuggets of advice that I think can make a trip truly memorable. Okay, you've piqued my curiosity. Give us a taste. What's the first thing that stood out to you? Honestly, it was how much they emphasized planning. Which, at first I was like, come on, planning, where's the spontaneity? Yeah. But they actually make a really good point. Yeah, Southeast Asia is incredible, but it's also incredibly diverse. You've got everything from megacities to tiny islands, scorching deserts to, well, let's just say you might encounter some rain. Yeah, encounter some rain is an understatement. We're talking monsoon season, people. Yeah. Not exactly ideal for trekking through a rainforest or lounging on a beach. Exactly. So this excerpt, they're all about strategy. They even highlight those shoulder seasons. Shoulder seasons. For those of us who don't speak fluent travel lingo, Think of it like this. You're basically hitting that sweet spot right before or after the peak tourist season. So fewer crowds, better prices. Often, yes. Plus, the weather is usually more pleasant. It's a win-win-win. Okay. I am sold on strategic timing, but then there's the, shall we say, slightly less glamorous side of travel, the budget. And I have to give them props. This excerpt doesn't just say set a budget and call it a day. Right, because who hasn't gone over budget on vacation? What kind of unexpected costs did they call out? Well, for starters, and this one hit home for me, have you ever thought about factoring in the potential cost of needing to change your flights last minute? Oh, that's a good one, especially if you're trying to island hop or something. Exactly. Or, and I know no one wants to think about this, but budgeting for, like, vaccinations or unexpected medical needs. Okay, that's a good point, and definitely not something you want to be caught off guard by. It's like that saying, hope for the best, prepare for the potential upset stomach from trying that delicious street food. Speaking of which, this handbook goes beyond the usual warnings and gives some really specific food safety tips, especially when it comes to street food, but we'll get to that later on. Yes, we'll definitely be digging into that later. But for now, let's talk about what makes Southeast Asia so special. The culture. But here again, this excerpt goes deeper than just saying, be respectful. Absolutely. It's one thing to read those general travel etiquette tips, but Southeast Asia has so many cultural nuances that you might not even think about. Yeah, like, I know to take my shoes off before entering a temple, but there are probably a million other little things I wouldn't even know to ask. Exactly. And that's where even just learning a few basic phrases in the local language can make a huge difference. I've heard that. Like, even if you butcher the pronunciation, the effort goes a long way. They even mention how just attempting the language, even if you fumble it, shows that you're not just another tourist. It shows you're actually trying to connect with their world, you know? Okay, I love that. Respect, check. Attempting the language, check. Mm. Now, let's talk destinations, because this is where I think this excerpt really shines. They give you a taste of the iconic spots, but then steer you towards those hidden gem experiences that most tourists probably miss. It's all about finding that balance, right? So which hidden gems did they uncover? Well, get ready to be surprised. Well, they raved about this place called the Perhension Islands. Have you heard of them? Perhension Islands. Ring a bell, but refresh my memory. Where are we talking? There are these islands off the coast of Malaysia. Picture this. Pristine beaches, water so clear you can see straight to the bottom. Okay, now you're just teasing. I need to add this to my list. Right. They're known for their laid-back vibe, amazing diving and snorkeling. It's like stepping back in time. Line me up. <laughs> Speaking of getting around, Southeast Asia can feel a little overwhelming, even intimidating when you think about all the different ways to travel between places. Does this excerpt address that at all? Absolutely. And this is where it gets fun. They actually encourage you to embrace a mix of transportation. Okay, I'm intrigued. What do they suggest? Think beyond just planes and trains. They're talking about those classic Southeast Asian modes of transport, like Songkhus in Thailand. Ever heard of those? Songkhus. Vaguely. 
Those are like... Imagine this. You're cruising down the road, wind in your hair, in the back of a colorful converted pickup truck. Wait, really? That's amazing. Right. It's not just a cheap way to get around. It's a total cultural experience in itself. I bet. Okay, Songthos noted. Mm -hmm. What about, you know, the inevitable travel hiccups? Because let's be real, Southeast Asia isn't exactly known for its predictable transportation schedules. They actually address that, encouraging a go-with-the-flow mentality, which I think is key. Delays happen, plans change, it's all part of the adventure. That's easier said than done sometimes, but I agree with the sentiment. And this is brilliant. They recommend packing a sarong. A sarong for, like, fashion emergencies. That too. But they're talking about it as a multi-purpose travel essential. It's a lifesaver. Okay, I'm all ears. How so? You can use it as a scarf, a makeshift towel, even a curtain if you need a little privacy. It's lightweight, dries quickly, packs down small. Genius. Sarong? Check. Go with the flow attitude? Check. Now let's talk about everyone's favorite topic, the food. Get ready for your mouth to water. This excerpt goes deep on the culinary delights of Southeast Asia. Late on me, what are we talking about here? They emphasize trying things you've never even heard of. Okay, I'm game. Give me an example. What's something I absolutely have to try? Ever heard of Conroe Bakar? Conroe Bakar. That even sounds delicious. It's this incredible dish from Sulawesi, Indonesia. Think super tender, slow cooked ribs, grilled over charcoal, and infused with this savory sweet sauce. Okay, you're killing me. Conro Bakar is going straight to the top of my list. Ah. But this does remind me we have to talk street food safety. Because as much as I love culinary adventures, I also don't want to be stuck in my hotel room. Oh, they've got you covered. Okay, lay it on me. What are their top tips? First off, the busiest stalls are usually the best bet. Think about it. Fresh food, high turnover. Makes sense. What else? Stick to food that's cooked to order and piping hot. And of course, bottled water is non-negotiable. Bottled water it is. Okay, so we're being smart, but not letting paranoia ruin all the fun. Switching gears for a second to something no one enjoys talking about, but is crucial in this part of the world, mosquitoes. It's not just the bites, though those are bad enough. It's about the diseases they can carry. Right, exactly. and prevention is key. Yeah. What do they advise? This excerpt... They are big on packing a good insect repellent. Eat. They didn't specify, but I'd say, yeah, go for the TT. And I'd even add, consider packing a lightweight mosquito net if you're prone to bites. Mosquito net, check. Yeah. Good to know. Now, on a slightly less itchy topic, but one that I know stresses people out, visas. Southeast Asia can be a maze of visa requirements. No kidding. It's one of those things that can really trip people up if they're not careful. So what do we need to know? Well, first and foremost, do your research. Requirements vary from country to country, so what works for one might not fly for another, literally. This excerpt had a few good tips. All right, give me the good stuff. Look into visa on arrival options. A lot of Southeast Asian countries offer these, which can be a lifesaver if you're short on time. Okay, good to know. I'm big on anything that saves time and hassle. Right. They also mention, and this is key if you're planning on hopping between multiple countries, look into whether you need a multi-entry visa. Oh, that's huge. I never even thought about that. It's amazing how much valuable info they managed to pack into this excerpt. It's really those little details that make all the difference, you know? Totally. Now, on a more serious note, one thing that I think often gets overlooked in the excitement of planning a trip is... What happens if something goes wrong? Okay, yeah, no one wants to think about that. But it's important to be prepared. What do they suggest? First and foremost, they are big on registering with your country's traveler program. You know, so if there's an emergency or some kind of unrest, they can contact you with updates. Oh, that's a good point. I'm terrible about remembering to do that. It's easy to overlook, but it can make a real difference. They also emphasize the importance of travel insurance. Make sure it covers medical emergencies, especially if you're planning on doing any adventurous activities, like, I don't know, maybe some of that epic diving you were talking about. Good point. Safety net in place. You know, it's funny because all this talk about potential travel hiccups yeah. makes me realize Southeast Asia can be a lot to process, even if everything goes perfectly. You're telling me it's like sensory overload in the best way uh, possible. Yeah, exactly. Which is why I love that this excerpt addresses the emotional side of travel, too, because it's not always glamorous Instagram photos and delicious food. What kind of advice do they give for dealing with that sensory overload? All right, we are back for the final leg of our Southeast Asia adventure, at least our virtual one for now. And this excerpt, they really saved some of their most insightful advice for last, didn't they? They did. It's like they knew we'd be creating those nuggets of wisdom after our whirlwind tour through 
everything Southeast Asia has to offer. Yeah. So before we release our listeners back into the wild, what final words of advice did this handbook impart? Well, one thing that really stuck with me was this idea of, and I love this phrase, traveling with intention. Traveling with intention. Yeah. I like that. But it's interesting because so much of what we've talked about is about being flexible, spontaneous. So how do those two things work together? Right, because you could easily get so caught up in just checking things off the list that yeah. you miss the point entirely. They're not saying you need a rigid itinerary or anything, but they do suggest taking some time before your trip to really think about what you hope to gain from the experience. Like, what are you hoping to get out of it? Do you want to connect with nature, immerse yourself in a new culture, maybe learn a new skill? It's like setting an intention for the trip itself, almost like a personal mission statement, but for travel. Exactly, because then... Even if your plans change, which, let's be real, they probably will. Happens every time. Exactly. Even if you encounter those unexpected detours, you have this guiding principle, this intention that helps you navigate those moments. That's such a good point. Because it's so easy to get caught up in the logistics of travel, booking flights, finding the best hotels, you know, all that stuff. All the things that stress you out. Exactly. That you forget why you wanted to travel in the first place. It's about the experience. And speaking of remembering why we travel, this excerpt ends on a really thought-provoking question. Okay, I'm ready for it. Hit me with that wisdom. <laughs> they ask, how will your experiences in Southeast Asia shape your perspective on the world? Wow. That really makes you stop and think, doesn't it? Because it's true. Travel isn't just about the places we go. It's about who we become in the process. At least, it should be. Exactly. It's about broadening our horizons, maybe challenging some of our assumptions, and hopefully returning home with a new appreciation for the world around us. And Southeast Asia, with its blend of ancient traditions, its modern cities, those stunning landscapes we were talking about, and let's not forget the incredibly welcoming people, it really does seem like the perfect place to go on that journey of self-discovery. Couldn't agree more. It's a place that stays with you long after you've left. Well said. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up our Southeast Asia adventure, at least for now. Yes, let's leave our listeners with that sense of wanderlust, that yearning to experience it all for themselves. To everyone listening, we hope this deep dive has inspired you to pack your bags, embrace the unknown, and as they say in Indonesia, selamat jalan, safe travels.